everybody. Welcome to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Uh, I'm here with my friends, Mark and Chris. Scott's over there. Evie's right over there. Uh, we're taping this just a little while after Donald Trump walked into the White House briefing room, actually, and tried to poison American democracy. That's, uh, that's why I'm not sitting down yet. I just don't feel like it yet. It's also why I'm dressed for a funeral, because Donald Trump tried really hard to kill something tonight. Around, was it 7 o'clock? Around 7 o'clock, the president came out into the White House briefing room and lied for 15 minutes. Just nonsensical stuff about illegal vote dumps and uh, corrupt election officials and secret Democratic counting cabals and, I don't know, long-form birth certificates, probably. It's all the same. And if you did not know that Joe Biden was getting close to 270, Donald Trump just provided all the proof you will ever need. True story, I'm wearing black tonight because I was getting dressed this afternoon and I thought he might try some shenanigans and it might be fitting to tell jokes while wearing something somber if he goes down that dark path. And I'm no prophet. It's just that he's so predictable. For weeks, we've been talking about how uh, there'd be a red mirage and how all those outstanding Biden mail-in ballots might let Joe catch up and that Trump would then probably come out around, I don't know, Thursday, maybe evening news time and pretend that he won and accuse everybody else of cheating. The guy does not have another gear. Get a new act. I mean, he said this stuff back in 2016. I will totally accept the results of this great and historic presidential election if I win. So we all knew he would do this. What I didn't know is that it would hurt so much. I didn't expect this to break my heart. For him to cast a dark shadow on our most sacred right from the briefing room in the White House, our house, not his, that is devastating. This, this is heartbreaking for the same reason that I didn't want him to get COVID. Certainly why I wanted him to survive because he is the president of the United States. That office means something, and that office should have some shred of decency. Now, we always knew he would leave a stain there, and not just from his butt bronzer, because everything he did, everything, is now in some way presidential behavior, including this, unless, unless every single person rejects what he just did. And that means for all the predictable behavior of the last few days, in the last four years, right now something unpredictable needs to happen. Republicans have to speak up. All of them. Because for evil to succeed, all that is necessary is for good men to do nothing. So say something right now, Republicans. Not later, not after you've stuck your finger up in the wind or wherever you want to put it. Right now. It's in your best interest. You only survived this up till now because a lot of voters didn't want to believe everything that was obvious to so many of us, that Donald Trump is a fascist. And when it comes to democracy versus fascism, I'm sorry, there are not fine people on both sides. So you need to choose Donald Trump or the American people. This is the time to get off the Trump train because he just told you where the train is going and it's not a passenger train. And he'll load you on it someday too. Now in the absence of good men, what about Mitch McConnell? Has he said anything? He's, what does he say? He declined to comment. Okay, Mitch McConnell has declined to comment. The maxim of the law is qui tacit consentiri. Who is silent gives consent. So Mitch, we heard you loud and clear. You're okay with this. It's not even a hard call. 
This is in your self-interest to support votes being counted. That's how you got your jobs. But I guess Mitch McConnell is saying that he was reelected through fraudulent votes as well, and he's holding on to the Senate because of fraudulent elections in other states, and Republicans picked up seats in the House because of fraudulent elections. So cast them all out? Is that what your silence is saying, Mitch McConnell? Because Americans are going to count something else starting right now. They're going to count who is willing to speak up against Donald Trump trying to kill democracy. And they'll count who will stay silent in the face of this desperate attack on the bedrock institution of this truly great nation. Because he just attacked the thing that makes us most great. And it is time for you all to mean what your hacks have been yelling. By the way, if Donald Trump is right, if Joe Biden did pull the strings behind the scenes in Republican states like Arizona and Georgia while coordinating with Democratic states like Pennsylvania and Nevada and Wisconsin and Michigan and throwing in the red herring of letting the Republicans keep the Senate and gain a few seats in the House while just barely removing Donald Trump. <laughs> wow. I mean, kudos to that level of interstate coordination. I mean, anyone who could accomplish that many things at once right now really would be the president we need during a global pandemic. <laughs> this is one I really wish I could swear. But I'll say this, we're not gonna show you a second of what that sad, frightened fraud said tonight. Because it's poison and I like you. He can suck silence. He can also suck my frosted yum nut. That reference is gonna make sense later. Stay with me. And instead, I wanna show you someone doing the right thing. This happened yesterday in Nevada. As I mentioned, we are not prepared to give that number. The Biden Troy family steals the election. The media is covering it up. The Biden Troy family steals this election. The media is covering it up. The Biden Troy family steals this election. The media is covering it up. We want our freedom for the world. Give us our freedom, Joe Biden. Joe Biden is covering up this election. He's stealing it. Where were we? What was the last question? That guy out front of the mics is Joe Gloria, the registrar of Clark County, Nevada. He let that guy spew his crazy till he was tired and then watched him walk away. And then Joe Gloria took a deep breath and did his job, which is what we should all do. Just stay cool. Okay, now let's do the monologue. Biden crime family, 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 Biden crime family. That's all I got. Okay, where were we? Even before Il Dushi lumbled to the podium tonight, America was experiencing some highly refined weapons-grade anxiety. Because while things were looking good for Biden, as of 8.30 p.m., the race remains on a razor's edge. So not only is this stressful, it's irresponsible. America should be nowhere near sharp objects right now. They should also take away our shoelaces and our belt. Now, a reminder, to win the presidency, a candidate, needs 270 electoral votes. As I record tonight's zoetrope, Biden has 253. Biden is so close to victory, he can smell its hair. One key state out there is Arizona. Biden is ahead. In fact, several news organizations already called the state for him. The Trump folks still insist that they have a chance, which may be true, but even Republican-friendly estimates say that Trump has a steep uphill battle to close the gap. And the only thing more challenging than a steep uphill battle for Donald Trump would be a steep downhill waddle. Then there's Nevada next door where Biden's ahead, but not by much. He currently leads by about 12,000 votes with the majority of the votes left from the Las Vegas area. But it's no surprise Trump didn't take Vegas. Whenever Trump is near a casino, he loses everything. Another state we're waiting on is uh, Georgia, which awards 16 electoral votes. Now it's a toss-up 
And per the Georgia state constitution, their election cannot ultimately be decided until all mail-in votes are tabulated and one of the candidates has defeated the devil in a fiddle contest. <laughs> but the key race is in the Keystone State, Pennsylvania, Biden's home state. Right now, Trump leads, but as they count the mail-in ballots, Biden is rapidly closing the gap. If Biden wins, he'll receive an election deciding 20 electoral votes. And per the Pennsylvania Constitution, that is one vote for every car they'll flip over in Philly, no matter who wins. But no surprise, Trump is already claiming he won Pennsylvania, among other states, tweeting, we have claimed for electoral vote purposes the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, which won't allow illegal observers, the state of Georgia and the state of North Carolina, each one of which has a big Trump lead. Additionally, we hereby claim the state of Michigan if, in fact, there was a large number of secretly dumped ballots, as has been widely reported. You can't make something official just by using fancy sounding words like hereby. For electoral vote purposes, I forthwith, herefore, hitherto, and two by four, call the last chocolate donut. My lawyers are coming in to lick it. Speaking of lawyers who can lick it, yesterday Trump sent a special ops team to Philadelphia Second first son and man getting dumped over Zoom, Eric Trump, an attorney to the president, and man asking a rat if he's going to finish that cockroach, Rudy Giuliani. And Eric revealed the Trump campaign's master plan. We are going to file suit in Pennsylvania. It's a shame that we have to do that. It's the last thing that we wanted to do. It's the last thing my father wanted to do. Technically, the last thing your father wanted to do was go to your birthday party, but if this was the last thing he wanted to do, why was it the first thing he said? We're going to go in the night of, as soon as that election's over, we're going in with our lawyers. And since your lawyer's Rudy, I assume by going in, you mean to prison? Then Rudy got a little testy. And the ultimate result is President Trump has won Pennsylvania. I've never heard of a count where you're ahead by... 400,000 with 80 plus percent counted and they haven't called it for you yet. Do you think we're stupid? You think we're fools? Is that a trick question? Because yes. I mean, Rudy, you butt dialed reporters twice. You voluntarily appeared on a television show that I executive produced that is anchored by cartoons twice. You were duped by Sasha Baron Cohen once, I think. It might be twice because judging by your lower teeth, your dentist trained in Kazakhstan as a veterinarian. Trump needs help anywhere he can get it, including divine intervention. And he has the support of his spiritual advisor and real estate agent saying, before we go upstairs, you should know that the previous owner had just a little murder problem. Watch where you step. Paula White. To support the president yesterday, Paula led a marathon prayer service in Orlando, and she was feeling the spirit. Strike and 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 strike until you have victory. I hear a sound of shouting and singing. I hear a sound of victory. I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. I hear a sound of victory. Victory, 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 victory. Don't you hate it when your preacher starts skipping? Tell you what, try wiping her off with a clean, damp cloth or unplug her and plug her back in. Uh, White uh, also summoned some very special poll watchers. For angels are being released right now. Angels are being dispatched right now. Angels have even dis been dispatched from Africa right now. Africa right now. Africa right now. From Africa right now. They're coming here. They're coming here. In the name of Jesus from South America. They're coming here. Hold on. Trump's asking for election interference from foreign angels? That's clearly committing collusion in broad daylight. Rudy, help me out. Do you think we're stupid? You think we're fools? And what is the deal with the guy who keeps passing through the shot behind her? Is that her roommate walking around with a rolled up New Yorker? Uh, yeah, hey, uh, don't mind me. You can just keep uh, doing with your work thing, but uh, tell you what, I'd stay out of the bathroom for a while. Let's say more than angels just dropped in. At one point, she started speaking in tongues. Oh, 
All right. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm a connoisseur of the mystical, but those aren't very impressive tongues. Sounds like she's on level two of Duolingo Holy Spirit Edition. Of course, like King David, White's message to the Lord can only be fully appreciated in song. I hear a sound of victory. I hear a sound of victory. Where were we? <laughs> okay. So that's the monologue that we had planned on. And when we come back, you might notice that my emotional tone might have simmered down a bit because we recorded what comes next before this. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's a fantastic show. You're going to want to stick around. Tonight, Larry Wilmer is here. And when we come back, it's an amazing meanwhile it's got the whole yum nut thing in it. You're gonna wanna know what I meant. Stick around.